everyone. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to install our development environment on a Windows machine. So we're going to be using .NET Core. And again, .NET Core is a very flexible environment. It can run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that on a Windows environment. So really the steps of what we're going to do is we're going to download and install .NET Core and we're going to create a new project Hello World, which is the traditional first program in any language, and I'll show you how to make a slight change to that and compile it. And then I'll show you how to install Visual Studio Code, which is a really nice lightweight editor from Microsoft, and then you can use that throughout the course to edit your code. And I've also attached a PDF file with detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. So to install .NET Core, you're going to go out to the following link. You're going to go out to .NET.Microsoft.com slash download, and you'll see the link in there, and then you can download .NET Core, kick off the installation, and then just do a simple test after it's done to make sure everything got installed okay. Once you've done that, you're going to create a new project. So first thing is you're going to create a new directory called CS Code. You're going to change to that directory. So I've included the the DOS commands to do that. You're going to use the mkdir command, create a directory called cscode, and then change that cscode directory. And then you'll fire off the command for .NET Core to create the shell of a new console program. And that's the command there, .NET new console dash dash name. And in our case, we're going to call it ch4 for chapter 4. So after that, I'll show you how to make a quick change to that. And then you can install Visual Studio Code. One thing I really like about this, you could use Visual Studio itself, the community edition for this, this course, but Visual Studio Code is really lightweight. It's a very quick download and install. It's very flexible. There's tons of plugins for it. I really like it because it's, it is such a lightweight thing. If you install Visual Studio itself, the community edition, install is a pretty heavyweight process. It may take you an hour. It took me over an hour on my notebook computer. I don't have the world's fastest notebook, but it's not the world's slowest either. But the Visual Studio Code installation process is really just a few minutes and it's very lightweight. And it's so flexible because it's in, uh, available in so many different environments. I run both Mac and Windows. And so I like using code on both of those. So I'll show you how to install that, open your prior project, and then make some compilation changes in here. So for our demo, I'm going to go ahead and jump onto my Windows machine, and you'll see a steady diet of that in this course of me jumping onto the Windows machine and using .NET Core and Visual Studio Code. So I'll show you how to get all that set up and get going right away. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and fire up my Windows machine, and I'll show you how to get everything installed and configured. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go out to .NET.Microsoft.com slash download. It'll ask me what I want to install. So I'm going to install .NET Core 3.1 and I'm going to download the .NET Core SDK for building applications. So I'll go ahead and click on this and download that. And it takes just a few seconds here. And I'll go ahead now that this file is downloaded and I'll go ahead and kick off the install. It's just finishing up here so we'll let it do that. So I'm going to go ahead and show it in the folder here. And I'll go ahead and bring this up and, and run this. So I'll double click on this, the .NET SDK installer. I'll go ahead and kick this off and we'll let it run through its paces here. So it first puts up the warning message here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click install. And like I say, this is a pretty quick install. So I'm gonna say, yes, I want this app to make changes to it. And now it's just gonna download part of the runtime and it'll go ahead and run through the install. So this is a pretty quick process. It's uh, not like installing Visual Studio or something like that. It takes just a few minutes. We'll go ahead and let it run through this process. And then once it finishes, I'll show you how you can type in a command to verify that the install has been complete. And then I'll show you how to go ahead and create our first program. So it's just downloading the last few pieces of this. and. I'll go ahead and pause the video here and let it finish the, the download. Okay, now it's complete. I'm going to go ahead and click close. And um, uh, now it's going to install the SDK portion of that. So I'm going to go ahead and click install here and let it run through the process here as well. So there we go. The installation is now complete. And now I'll go ahead 
and open a command prompt window and we can verify that our installation has been uh, is working properly so I'll go ahead and do that now okay now I'm gonna go ahead and open up a command prompt window so so I can type in CMD and it'll bring up a command prompt and I can open up a command prompt window and I can type in now dotnet dash dash version to verify that my installation is correct and so I've done that and now you can see that the version is 3.1.300 so now I'm going to go ahead and create a directory that we can put our code in so I'm going to use the command mkdir and I'm going to call this directory CS code for C sharp code and now I'm going to go ahead and change to our directory by typing in CD CS code and there we go and so now I'm going to go ahead and create our first console program so you can use the command dotnet new console and then we're going to put in a name and I'm going to put in CH4 for chapter 4 so we're going to go ahead and create this it looks like I forgot a T here so I'll go ahead and use the up arrow and I'll correct this dotnet new console name CH4 so there we go it's going to go ahead and create this this uh, stub of a program for us for hello world so I'm going to go ahead and change our directory to CH4 and I can go ahead and run this program by typing in the command dotnet run and we'll be using that a lot in this course to dot to run applications and it'll take just a second to compile it and then you'll see hello world so let's take a look I'm gonna type in directory here and you'll see a number of pro number of files that dotnet has created for us I'm gonna go ahead and load up notepad with our program.cs file and we can take a look at the code program.cs here we go and so now if I look in notepad I can see that what dotnet core is generated for so I, let me drag this here to the middle of the screen and you'll notice that it starts off with a using statement so we'll be talking about that later in the course it defines some of the packages that are available for your program and then the next line down is a namespace that we'll also talk about later on but that just basically organizes your programs the big piece here then is this class program that's the definition of a class file and we'll talk about that C sharp is an object oriented programming language and we'll talk about that later on in the course about how to organize your programs with objects the real beginning of the program is this void main and that is the entry point into a console program this piece right here with the strings and the arguments the ARGS is for arguments is that you can pass in command line arguments to a, to a console program then the the line that actually executes is this console dot write line statement and it prints out hello world so what I want you to do then is make a small change to this I'm gonna put in a change here to put print out my name hello world comma my name is Eric so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'll go back into our console program and I'll type in dotnet run once again and notice how I use the up arrow you can scroll through to get to previous commands I've made a small change now it's going to compile and now you can see that we've we've made a small change to our program we've compiled and edited it again very simple but this is what you need to get going so look how quick you can go this is literally just a few minutes to install dotnet core and then uh, compile your very first program and edit it so you could certainly use notepad for the rest of this course I don't recommend it so what you'll want to do is install Visual Studio Code which is a really nice editor and so in the next part of this video here I'm going to show you how to install Visual Studio download and install Visual Studio Code and then use that to make another change to the program and how you can use code to get going so let me pause the video here and then we'll look at the next part of this of how to install Visual Studio Code okay now I've gone to code.visualstudio.com I'm going to go ahead and download Visual Studio Code for Windows so it asked me which version I want to download and this is the nice thing by the way that you can get it for all three of these environments but I'm going to go ahead and download this now and then once this downloads it's a pretty quick download I'm going to go ahead and kick this off and here we go 
And like I say, this is a very quick uh, installation process. It's really not going to take you a ton of time. Uh, I'm on a pretty fast computer here, but it asks you to accept the license agreement. And I'm just going to accept all the defaults uh, as far as the location of where to st store it. I do want it to create a desktop icon, so I'm going to add that. And uh, I I'm just going to keep the rest of the defaults the same. So I'll go ahead and kick off this install and let it run. And then once it's done, I'll show you how you can open up our code with Visual Studio Code. And it's really a nice editor. It's going to give you IntelliSense uh, autocomplete. There's a number of plugins you can install for it. There's a lot of really great things with it. So like I said, that was in real time. I didn't even have to speed that up. It's going to go ahead and launch code for us. And I'm going to go ahead and, and open up our file that we created earlier. So, okay, so I'll go ahead and navigate to our to where I created my program, and which in this case is going to be our CS code directory, our chapter four, and then I'll go ahead and open program.cs. And now you'll see the difference of, of using Visual Studio Code versus Notepad. Everything is going to be color kind of coordinated. There's a, a bunch of options that will help you uh, help autocorrect different things. If you're missing certain things, it will help you with the typing. There's just a ton of features with this. And also, it'll integrate a terminal as well. So you can open a terminal, and then inside that terminal, you can type commands so that you can compile your program from within Visual Studio Code. Also, when I open this, it says that it's recommended that I install the C, C Sharp extensions for this, and this is one of the, the things I'll do. So I'll go ahead and click for the recommendations and let it install these things. It'll probably do the same for you. It'll help with the C Sharp code. It'll help you um, um, uh, run and debug code and a number of other features. So that's really a good thing. And I'm going to install the other recommendation it has for me as well. It'll take just a second. The first installation and the second installation is now done as well. So if I go into my terminal, I can actually comp compile and run my program from there. And I'll show you how to do this once it uh, fires up the PowerShell command terminal here. It'll take just a second for that to fire up. And when it starts up, I'll show you how to compile it. So one of the things you can do once you've started up Visual Studio Code is you can use the Control plus key and you can make zoom and make the program a little bit bigger. So in this case, here's the a little bit bigger font. I'll stretch this out a little bit. And you can see now maybe it's a little bit easier to read. And so if you want to make it smaller, you can hit Control minus and it will, it will zoom it back down. So whatever you have comfortable with. There's a lot of other options in here. I'll see if I can put a lesson in that will talk about the color options. A lot of people like different colors with the editors. I'll put that in here later on in the course. But those are kind of some of the basics that you can use. And now if you look at the bottom in the terminal, I'm located in my CS code CH4 directory, and I can just type in .NET run as part of the terminal down here and it will go ahead and make the changes here. So really nice environment here. Um, I'll go ahead and make a simple change here. And one of the things you're going to want to remember is if you make a change in this environment, you really need to save it here before you rerun it. And again, you can use the up and down arrow keys here as well. And I type in .NET run and it's going to pr print out my first and last name. So that's really it for this lesson. That's how you get up and going pretty too, too lightweight, easy install processes to get up and going. It'll provide you a great set of tools. So either way you decide to go uh, in the cloud or with Windows, either way is a good environment, or you could go with both. So let's go ahead and jump back to the summary and wrap this lesson up. Thank you so much for your interest in this video. If you like this video, please click the like button. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. And also, there's a free link to this course on Skillshare that's in the video description. So that's really it for this video. Thanks again, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.